Black Hearts Cinema Podcast coming back at you. As always. Me, Fletcher, joining me as always. Me. Mr. Whitehead, and joining us as always, too. Hello, Earth hello. Yeah. Mr. Hudson's with us on the board tonight. Whitehead, take it away. We watched one of my favorite movies, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? It's not just Matt's, one of Matt's favorite movies. It's one of my favorite movies, too. We, we both had the similar experience of having a worn and tattered VHS copy. I still do. I wanted, yeah. I wanted to watch it on that, but we didn't want to drag a VCR out to where we're hanging out tonight. Yeah. Uh, I will say this. I've never had this one, but it's one I've always watched, like when it came on like TBS or TNT yeah. or Comedy Central. And I probably haven't seen it since high school, but uh, I was surprised how well I remembered it because this is one I, we've all talked about. This. I never had this one. But the daycare had this one that I stayed at when I was mm. a kid. Mm. And, again, to it, I didn't understand at the time. But I was like, well, I don't when I watch normal cartoons. Why don't I yeah. see yeah. Porky Pig and, like, Daffy Duck together? I didn't understand about, you know, ownership of character rights. Uh, you know, why did, do we want to go to the plot or do we just want to profess our love of Roger but Rabbit? I, I would much rather just profess my love for this movie because it is so good. And it still holds up. Because I, I can't think of the last time I've watched it. And and there's not really much anything else like it. Yeah, no. That has been done successfully. You I know? mean, All I can it, think of is well, like Cool World and yeah, shit like that. It's way better. Uh, oh, yeah, this is mm. way better than Cool World. No, no, no. Cool World is way better. Oh, you like Cool World better than No, this? I'm just kidding. No, cool. I, I it, do kind of like Cool it's World. It's okay. It's not a bad movie, but no. Who from Roger Rabbit is the superior Mixed animation, I, I will say, action movie. Say this, you, I think you brought up Hudson. Like, I think this is the first. We're literally watching a first edition DVD mm -hmm. for 1988. This looks great because we were watching it a DVD. I got that it in high school. Gray. It was you know that was in like oh four oh five oh six sometime in there. I remember when it came out, um, but it's that same copy. Um, I'm trying to think because I mean it is weird to me that we live in the world. I'm sure this one's on 4K that we can oh, just. Yeah stream 4k mm. now like we're at a fucking movie theater like yeah. in, in terms of a technical aspect i'm like like remember like when we in, you installed that 5.1 surround mm -hmm. and we were watching every movie we had just be like you can hear different I things know. it's interesting yeah all all these different uh uh uh, uh intentions and directions the director wanted me to be i, I guess just long in. point short i'm just trying to say the last time i watched this was probably on like comedy central on a Sanyo TV that only had one speaker in it. Well, but this looked great. I, I, last time I probably watched it was a cathode ray TV. TV yeah. This is what I'm trying to get at. Sorry. This was like definitely like in a rotation for me of movies that I had like one of those little CRT TVs with the VCR built in. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, I'd go to bed at night and this would go in the VCR and then I'd sometimes just set it to repeat. And it'd like play all night. That's why like my. Oh, copy. like it reround itself after it got to the oh, end of the yeah. credits. Yeah, and like I'd wake up in the middle of the night. Um, because my parents let me do that. They never, you know, but... Um, Damn, you a bad kid. No, but, like, I, 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 I can quote parts of it. It's that kind of movie for me, like Star Wars is for some people. Um, yeah, he hearing some of it last night, it just it all it all came flooding back to me. I'll save you, baby! Yeah, because I did not know this movie wasn't for kids when I watched it as a kid. I was, yeah, yeah. I got to watch it as a kid all the time. I mean, it's yeah. PG, but it does have a lot of adult humor in it. Like, uh, it's one of those things, like, I always enjoyed, like, I kind of think it's interesting, Rocco. like yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, like PG movies now kind of tend to be more on the kidsier side. I feel mm -hmm. like whereas this is one that there is stuff for kids, but it's I think much more for adults. So. Well, it's a detective story. That's mm -hmm. why when I was a little kid, I I loved watching Looney Tunes and like Tom and Jerry because I was like, they wreck shit. They do the violence, and yeah, the violence is like wild. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Dragon Ball Z. Like, remember when you started seeing those unedited? How much rawer Dragon Ball Z was? Yeah, which leads me to think. I was thinking about this last night. The Toon World. This was what forty seven. In, in, in the yeah, in mm -hmm. the story. Would Toon World just keep evolving? Probably. Uh, what what came first, animation, then Toon World, or Toon World and, and then, then the animation? animation. Mm. They never really talk about that. Yeah, and I mean, they never really talk about. I mean, is that how a tune is birthed? Does someone just draw it and then it's a new? Yeah, would Goku just go find Toriyama and be like, "Hey, let's, let's, do, let's do some stuff." <laughs> you want to hear like a dumb kid thing that I just thought of? Because uh, the Looney Tunes are in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, obviously. Mm -hmm. I remember one time I was with my grandpa watching uh, Looney Tunes, and. Uh, he was a big Civil War guy or whatever, so he had like a couple like little pictures in his bedroom, of, like the Civil War battles, like the drawn ones that like looked really realistic. Yeah. And uh, he was talking about World War Two, but he would, I said something about like, do they have TV back then? Because he was talking about World War Two, something I was like maybe five, six max. 
He's like, oh, they had cartoons during the big war, and I thought he was talking about the Civil War. So for like two years, from like six to eight, I was like, he was talking about like, you know, Looney Tunes and shit were like yeah. in the 40s, and they had it during like, I guess, toward the latter part of, you know, uh, Disney was already a thing by then, like, yeah, Steve I mean, Willie and hell, shit. they used to do, you know, propaganda cartoons. Yeah, like, you know? yeah. but I thought, I like, them. huh, they marched in rows, but they, I guess they went and watched TV, but it's weird that I never. They never seemed to, like I'd seen some historical yeah. movies like Gettysburg and shit like that. I was like, weird. They never talk about popping on some tunes, man, to chill out. I was like, also, too, I guess they had a real loose sense of humor. Because you know when you watch like period shit like that? So in my mm. dumbass kid mind, I was like, yeah, Bugs Bunny's just around the corner after Gettysburg, after the after oh the battle. <laughs> you go and watch a little Bugs Bunny and Porky Pig. Yeah. How, how can all y'all be so angry at each PTSD. other? Yeah. yeah, like I was like, huh, that's funny. But he was talking about like World War II, mm-hmm. and I was like, because yeah. that was obviously the biggest war. The thing I asked was the biggest war, and I didn't realize there was American wars and world war conflicts and shit. I stupid, though. <laughs> but you got me. That's, okay. a, that's a great little kid that, yeah. logic. Yeah, I could, I could see the, the hey, logic. Hey, you, you told me about a, uh, when you were a kid, like throwing up poop or something. Like your sister, if you throw up black, she's like, that's poop. Oh, yeah. I got violently sick one time in my older. I remember being in the bathroom. It was like woke, woke her up in the middle of the night with me just violently puking black into the toilet. Had not really been sick mm-hmm. the night before. Just woke up puking black. She comes in there and sees what's happening. And she gets down in my ear and she's like, oh, oh you're, you're pooping out of your mouth. That's poop. <laughs> that means you're going to die. Gosh. And then just goes back to bed and leaves me in there panicking. That now, Because now I think I'm shitting out of my mouth and dying. I remember when you yeah. told me that Good shit. older sister, yeah. I yeah. was like, yeah. <laughs> she's giving my boy anxiety here. Sa- same sister, uh... And our friend tied me to a chair. This is after Urban Legend had come out, and we've watched it several times. Okay. Uh, she tied me to a chair, or her and her friend tied me to a chair, and they had they had uh, what I thought was bleach, and forced me to drink it, and kept telling me I was gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's intense. I was gonna tell little Diddy about something my sister did to me, but but yeah, yeah. I don't you know. took the cake. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I was fine. They let me. Uh, they <laughs> tied me like ten minutes later. I was good. I wasn't dead. And uh, how's your relationship now? Pretty good. Matt pretty hit her good. in the it's Adam's apple. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. One time something bad needs to happen to her, and you like this means you're gonna die. <laughs> no. Mm. Um. Sorry. Sorry, Roger Rabbit. Um. Other things I love about this movie. Um, Bob and Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. Yes, and you, and you also kind of touched on it earlier. It's a detective story, but it's a noir, like, 30s, 40s detective story. Like, that's, like, another aspect of it. And then layered on all that, you get, like, this cool golden age L.A. Hollywood kind of feel. You know, it's not a real – it's not the historical Hollywood, but that's there. And uh, But all the hallmarks yeah. are there, like you're saying, like the noir. cars, and I like the, the, the suits, the, the, the ties that are too fucking short. And, um, yeah, I just like the whole aesthetic of that on top of it, too. Well, I always appreciate, too, like you were just saying. Mm-hmm. Like, as we were watching last night, I was like, this is a straight up through and through. Like, it's got every hallmark of a noir. Oh, There's yeah. a femme fatale. There's mm-hmm. a damsel in distress, if you will. There's a bar he goes to. There's make. a bar he goes to. He's a drinker. But it's also, it's not a parody. Like, they're, they're yeah, being saying. Like, serious it, about it, 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 as serious as you can be. It meets but, all yeah. the criteria to be yeah. considered a noir. Like, it uh, does. I always like stuff like that. Like, uh, as we were watching last night, I was just stupid, but. It, I kept wanting to watch just the one Animatrix story, a detective mm-hmm. story, which is the one that uh, Cheryl Wontanabe did, the guy that did Bebop. That's yeah. the one in black and white, a case to end all cases. Yeah. Where it, it starts with him lighting the cigarette and ends with him lighting the cigarette on the train. Ah, it's been a long Th- That was time. like one of the best ones of the animated stories of that. But uh, again, just while we're talking about noir stuff. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. Well, we mentioned Hoskins uh, rounding out, or not rounding out, but Christopher Lloyd, too. Yeah, as, as Judge Doom, mm-hmm. uh, scary as fuck. Uh, not uh, not a spoiler because his name is Judge Doom. Um, guess what? He ends up being the bad guy. Yeah. Guess yeah. what? He's not even human. He's a tomb the whole time. The whole time. Movies doesn't. And he mean. talks like this. Uh, that that part always freaked me out as a kid. Did we ever figure out that was Howie Mandel is the car? I meant to look. I just forgot. I know. He, I mean, he did Roger. Obviously, I feel like I want to say he did the car too. Cause I always forget he's... He didn't sound like it to me, but then again, it could be. Well, I always forget he's Gizmo in the yeah. Gremlins movies. Gizmo says, like... Well, he sings and stuff, though, too. Um, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want him to have that credit. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Um, Fuck you, Howie! <laughs> yeah. 
It's like yeah. Bruce Willis being a uh, Spike and Rugrats. Yeah. Now that well, one he, I was cool he, even with. Even though he did have a speaking part, I guess. I guess the baby's word. Uh, what did they? Did they eat something? I can't remember. Oh no, they, the wild thornberries is that crossover one with the wild thornberries and Liza can he, can talk to him. So babies are animals. No, no, no. Liza can hear Spike talk. That isn't that the thing. Oh, that one okay. From the wild thornberries with yeah, Nigel. She, she could hear. Yeah, with with uh, beautiful Tim Curry. That's Tim Curry. That is, is yeah. Nigel. Lots I didn't Thornberry know that. Is Tim Curry. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. How did you not know that? I mean, <laughs> well, I maybe I did and just forgot. I did watch a lot of Wild Thornberries. And, yeah. Uh, anyone watch Rocket Power? Woogity, 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 woogity. Woogity. Yeah, we did. We did. They unfortunately weren't mm. in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Though. I'd like to think if Who Framed Roger Rabbit took place after they, you know, they'd be there. They were there in the future. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, too. Uh, like, do all animations get to come to Toontown? Like, I was going to say, is Gene Starwin going to come in this? Or are we like, is it like a Tulpa thing? Do you have to just, like, think it up? Or is it, do you have to think it up, and then also it has to be embraced by a certain amount of quality? Because if it's an unpopular cartoon, that probably doesn't bring it into existence. But, you know, the more people that believe in it. Yeah. Might have a bigger presence. I mean, s- Salad Fingers could have shown up in Toontown. Well, one he, does, one. He, he does... Whenever he gets hit in the head at one point, he makes the little birds that pop out of the eggs. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of just, like, fly off. And it's like, dude, he's, he's creating life. He's creating on the same level as him. Or that could go on to cr- create sentient life, which is just real odd. Or if I could even go you one deeper and maybe put a little bit of thought and analysis into Roger Rabbit that it does not need because it's too much. But what if this is a metaphor and all the tunes are different representations of different gods, goddesses, vices, and virtues, and oh they shit. change over time as as tastes change. So kind of like, like a reincarnation of tunes? Well, I'm just saying, like, you know, yeah, but, like, if, he, if Bugs Bunny was Bugs Bunny in 1947 because Bugs Bunny is the most popular thing in 1947, he would eventually... <laughs> Ouch. Your, your computer. Yeah, I know. Sorry. Yeah. Um, it... Uh, that made my brain reset. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, my, my headphones feed back into Fletcher's PC. Um, so anytime his PC, like, does a Java update, I get it right in my brain. Um, but what I was going to say is... Um, if he's, what was if I he's, saying? If he's, well, if he's well, I, like some chameleon-level mask of the guy. Oh, She's oh, the most that, that, important thing like, in 1947. Like, 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 if it's Bugs Bunny in 47, then it's just, I don't know, Goku in, two, you know... Whatever the most popular cartoon is. At the yeah. Time. They're like, uh, they're actually spirits. It's a deeper movie than you think. Oddly enough, there is a uh, shout out to Jason Carpenter from uh, Dead Rabbit Radio. But there's an episode, an old episode he did, one of those really short ones. Uh, uh-huh. About how, um, something along those lines, but what if he was a, like it used to be an ancient trickster god. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really neat. You should go check it out. I, like that. I uh... Who did y'all say Roger Rabbit is supposed to be? I thought it was Howie Mandel. No, it's uh, this threw me for a loop because uh, we were talking about the director outside. Do you remember um, Zodiac? Mm-hmm. Remember when he's trying to figure out who's writing those movie posters and he goes to that guy and he has a basement in, Sac- in San Francisco and he's like, not many people have basements. He's real creepy. And he turns out the light and Jake Gyllenhaal is like, runs out of there, freaked out with the doors locked. It's Charles Fleischer. Oh, okay. Very odd looking man. Charles Slasher's a voice actor, too, though. Uh, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that that was him. I just immediately reckon, mm-hmm. recognized him from Finchner's Zodiac. Yeah, yeah okay, now. And I was like, oh, God, that's mm-hmm. that fucking guy from like two and a half hours in the Zodiac? Oh, I don't remember. Um, sorry, that, that threw me out because I thought it was. Well, who's the car? What was the car's name again? Car. I don't know. <laughs> it's a taxi, man. Uh, Jimmy? No. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I can't remember his name. Like I said, I didn't have this one, fellas. Was it Stretch? That's probably one of the weasels. Mm. Um, Start naming names. I'll tell you what it was. Um, Marvin Acme, which was a no. person. R.K. Maroon. No. No. L.T. Santino. No. I'm, I'm naming character names. Uh, Raul, Augie, Angelo, Arthritic Cowboy. <laughs> Is it in order of appearance? Because he appears. It, it's just uh, 76 cast members on IMDb I'm going through. Well, it's lost the sense of time. Never going to so, find yes. out. <laughs> No, no, also to fucking Mozilla Firefox is being a, a dickhead right now. Well, um, I will say one other uh, interesting aspect of this movie. Um, 
and like I've heard or read about it. it may have been some of those bonus materials, but um, you know the whole like little subplot, like where Doom bought out the the rail car system. Mm-hmm. So it's a funny little point in history, but um, so modern LA does not have like uh, those rail cars anymore. They in they stayed in Frisco, right? Oh yeah, Frisco kept it. Yeah. L.A. dropped them, but it was like a conspiracy. Um, like in the movie, they're kind of referencing it. Like Doom bought out the car co- the uh, public transport company to to shut it down so that everyone would be forced to buy a car and then use the freeways. Yeah. the whole movie is about freeways. Um, but that actually really did happen. But it was the auto manufacturers in real life bought out the. A rail car system in LA, and then immediately they bought it to shut it down so that everyone would be forced to buy cars. Hmm. Yeah. So I guess um, they were referencing that. But yeah, they're trying to uh, also, it's like a commentary on, uh, I guess, big business trying to move in and like maximize profit because, you know, he, Doom goes off on this long tangent talking about shopping malls and, uh, gas stations as yeah. if it's the greatest thing on earth it was uh, um, it was gonna make him money yeah yeah benny the cab what was his name but if there's one yep. flash did the cab too okay oh well sorry if there was one bad tune i bet there's more i'm sure there are we need a sequel well i was gonna say to like up bob hoskins we need a sequel <laughs> r.i.p 2014 yeah um like you were saying too i was gonna say you were talking about this being a true nor it kind of reminded mm-hmm. me of uh, what's that one we watched with Edward Norton and Bruce Willis where he's like the OCD detective in the 40s oh and God. the bad guy's out balding it the no. whole time but it, it kind of had you also have to remember I Mandela effect myself out of that, that movie that's true that's the one because we, we've been over you this you thought before. we were fucking and I was like I promise we're not fucking with you man you were looking, looking at us all weird I was calling you guys liars I'm like I've never seen this movie I, was like, and I finally it? remembered I, that, yeah. it's one of those movies I came over after floating the buffalo and was like ridiculously tired and just passed out, but, like, fought it because I really wanted to watch this movie. Yeah, and you remembered it, and I still didn't. Yeah, which makes no sense. Uh, I think that might have been one of my threats to blow my brains out, too. I can't remember. You're like, you're wrong. You guys are lying. I'll blow my brains uh, out. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. Uh, but, uh, but yes, I, but I know the movie you're talking about that now. That kind of thing where it was really like a industrialist orchestrating everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For him, it's just another day of being an industrialist kind of thing, like the highway system, like yeah. you're talking about. And it kind of had some Chinatown vibes that I didn't pick up on as a kid because I hadn't seen Chinatown yeah. uh, with Nicholson. Yeah. Uh, and there's the one, the two Jakes, which was after that, which mm-hmm. is like right before Roger Rabbit it, it, in terms of when it came out, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But um, but I'm just shocked that's Charles Fleischer. Yeah, yeah. I don't like know why I, how I got Howie Mandel in my head, but I've thought that for years. Because I, I didn't know been, that for yeah. a long time too. And Because uh, yeah. it's like you say, he doesn't say a lot. He does sometimes have a couple sentences, uh-huh. but I never realized that was – uh, what was that show he had with the briefcases to uh, make a deal or something? Deal, yeah. I was like, that's that fucking guy? What the fuck? Bobby's World. Bobby, yeah, that's mm. how I knew, knew yeah. of him. Well, he was one of those ones, like, when he started buzzing his head, I didn't realize that that was, like, a different guy. Until I, was, mm. what, like, I was like, oh, that's the guy with the curly hair from when I was a kid? Mm. Oh, you know, yeah. he had curly hair in the 80s. Uh, yeah. Kind of like how every now and again I'm like, oh, yeah, uh, Morpheus is Cowboy Curtis. Yeah, he, he did a real yeah. looks uh, And Jimmy Jump. Revive. Jimmy Jump. Um, you guys, we got anything else on Roger Rabbit? We're about at 20 minutes here. Uh, we're ticking on it. We can rate it. Bet, bet uh, you can guess what my rating's going to be. I'll let you go first, man. Five solid Bob Hoskins out of five. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it's a perfect movie for me, too. I'm not saying it's a perfect movie for everyone, but for me, this fills a niche in my life uh, that's existed since I was born. And we have... And we need another movie like it. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I don't know if we've actually said at any point in this, uh, the main draw of this movie is it's, it's a blend of live action animation. So if you've never heard of Who Framed Roger Rabbit or couldn't figure that out from looking at the cover, um, that's kind of what the gimmick is, is it's cartoon characters in the real world. And I say, I'll have to say this, there's not another movie that has done it as well. I mean, even half as well. I, yeah. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up before I read it. I want to get one little thing out. Mm. I was going to say I was watching this last night because this is 88. And, like, you know, like how sometimes you might go back and watch, like, something from the early 2000s where they have a CGI character. Mm-hmm. And you can see the actor, like, like let's say, I know no one can see us right now, but Whitehead's the CGI character. But the actor will be, like, missing the mark. None of that yeah. in this. Like, this yeah. kept it, like. Pretty fuck, pretty fucking perfect as far as it looks like Bob Hoskins is making eye contact with a rabbit. Yeah, if if you're yeah. interested in that, if you watch it, um, 
afterwards, if you got the time, if you really like it, there are some good like behind the scenes director stuff, like on some of the DVD, DVDs, if you watch DVDs on and DVD. stuff. It's interesting how they made it because it, it does kind of predate the CGI stuff, like where they have people on set, you know, that they can yeah. interact with. It's kind of cool how they got it made because there's no, I mean, there might be some computers in there. There was random stuff in the '80s, but I don't see any. It's like you know. It's traditional animation overlaid over. It's cool to learn how they made it. Is my yeah, I'm sure yeah. they had some sort of marker there to yeah. o- in la- overlay it, like you're saying. But, like, it doesn't feel like There's Bob Hoskins p- isn't looking at and making eye contact with the character. Like, I, I'm trying to think of an example because well, sometimes you watch older stuff and you're like, oh, now this just doesn't hold up with the effects. There's a scene in the, the club scene um, when Jessica finally comes out and she's walking down the catwalk towards the middle of the club closer to Eddie and um, – the other guy, the prank, um, R.K. Maroon. I don't know, R.K. Maroon is the uh, Acme. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, she's walking down, and the camera actually pans up above, so it would be like in the ceiling looking mm-hmm. down. And you're looking down at, like, Bob Hoskins and, like, everyone else looking up at this person, this cartoon character, who, if you step out of the movie for a second, you know wasn't actually standing there. Right. So, But it's all pulled off perfectly. That's kind of like what I was thinking. It's like this complex shot in the first thing, because it takes place above at an angle, um, looking down, like, at a crowd that are looking up, at a character you can't see, it's just, and they somehow pull it off, yeah. Yeah, like, I just guess it. And they all look look convincing, like, they're all looking in the same spot, no one's looking in different places, because everyone in that crowd should be looking at the same spot, and, yeah. And they were doing it, I guess I would yeah. say, no one missed their mark, and it aged great. Oh, yeah, it's um, mm-hmm. solid. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I was going to say 10 out of 10, again, from just a technical aspect alone, and the fact that this is now nearly 40 years old, if you think about it, it's 20, yeah. or no, 36 years 36, old, right? Yeah. Same age as me. Came than out the year Space I was born. Yeah. Yeah, I still I have the first one. Never saw the second one. But well, again, if did. this wouldn't have been <laughs> a, if this would have if like this wouldn't have been a success, we might not have had stuff like Space True. Jam, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like that's why I'm like ten out of ten. I forgot about Space Jam. I guess I said no movie has done it half as well. No movie has done it three quarters of as well because Space Jam is. Well, okay. hey, Space Jam didn't have Disney characters in it. That is true. Yeah. So they, not gonna they, lie. They, yeah, they did. They for for the spirit of Ian, just while we're on Space <laughs> Jam for just a moment, who didn't want those badass uh, Jordans that Jordan had at the end of Space Jam with a little blue oh, Michael yeah, yeah, on it yeah, and he stretched yeah. the arm out. I always wanted a pair of those shoes. Yeah. Didn't get them though. But uh, yeah. you guys want to get out of here? We'll go watch something or do whatever. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, peace. Y'all be good. Go watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit if you have not seen it. Do it. Because you're missing out. For real. Bye. Peace.